You know, you, you spend half of your life as a musician on stage. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> and like, and like throngs of people yelling at you and having this like amazing communal experience. Mm. And now it's like the chance of that happening is kind of dim at the moment. Yeah. What does that do to your, what does that do to your like mental state? Are you having like, um, that, it's interesting because people have asked that and it's, it's not something that I really think about or, or need, you know, okay. we, don't, we don't do this and play because it's something like I need to be on stage with a crowd. I need these things. I, we don't, we're almost shy about the whole thing. We almost kind of a little bit embarrassed, like, sorry, <laughs> you know, this just comes with it. Um, but we really enjoy it. And it's such a meditative experience for somebody like me. It's so focus, you know, present tense focus. And once it's gone, it's sort of gone. And uh, at the moment, is really when I sort of think about it. But honestly, right now, I haven't really thought too much about when I could get back to doing that because I've just been so busy trying to figure out everything else. Right. I mean, like um, the thing in my mind was, is like, when can I get on stage? <laughs> no, I, just, I feel like getting on stage means that the, you know, the whole thing is getting back in motion. Yeah. Again, and so that's what it represents. You know, it's interesting because the last couple of times we were on stage, we were starting to feel this thing approaching you know we were in new york and we were in new orleans when we did the second half of our tour we could feel this sort of energy happening and there's so much miscommunication and so many people wanting to say this and that and all that stuff when people start saying misinformation really hurts people you know nobody really knows how to do it and it got to the point where it was sort of up to us to pull a plug and we could just feel it like this is this is getting wrong this is really dangerous you know and even uh, I remember we were in um, Knoxville finally, and there was we were a part of a debate between people who were running the government there, and one person really wanted us to not cancel. I was very upset, and the other person was begging us to do it. And the club people were like, oh, "We don't know what's happening," and we just sort of said, "We're pulling it. Like, there's no way." That's tough. And then flew home, and then it was just like a, a different world. You have a lot of people that depend on you though, for safety, for income, for all of these things. So, you know, I know you don't take that stuff lightly, pulling the plug. Yeah, well, it, you know, <clears throat> whoever would have been upset about us not playing would, uh, we were pretty sure that they would eventually be happy we didn't, right. you know? Right. I mean, it just seemed wild. <laughs> well, let's talk about something happy because, you know, radio I was happy. I was thrilled with all that stuff. I <laughs> that. It's so radio, fun. <laughs> radio has turned a hundred years old. I can't. Wait, what? I've been working in it all that time yes. uh, for an entire hundred years, and we're celebrating that. And so we're just asking I'm artists. I'm convinced you will be the owner of radio. <laughs> <laughs> we're asking our favorite artists who are here on the East Radio Sound Space Sundays, like what the impact of radio has on you and like oh. what it's had on your life. Radio is so important um, because it's just, it's, it's something that almost accidentally gets into your skull. You know what I mean? Like I think about that all the time with my son who's five and uh, when, if we watch something, it almost has to be curated you know, because it comes into your universe by choice. You know, he doesn't just sort of flip through something and accidentally get turned on to Sesame Street. You right. know, Sesame Street has to be specific unless somebody else is watching it. And I think about all the sort of accidental loves that happen because you just had radio on. You know, and radio, uh, especially when I was younger, you know, makes you less lonely. You know, and it was just some, something organic and alive was happening. And no matter what you do with playlists and things like that, you don't, it's still you touching it. But when, when you get this sort of feeling of an other coming in and turning you on to things that, that you almost just find out through osmosis, you know, you just hear a song and you stop. And I remember that being the most important thing. And I think that's still really, really important to kind of have, let other people take control and curate a little bit for you, you know? 
Well, I think people have that moment. Escape happens all the time. People have had that moment with your music, you know, like they've stopped and been like, and yeah. that you've been a discovery. So that and I apologize to everyone for that. It was not on purpose, or was it? I am mm -hmm. happy about that. Let's talk about your Martika cover. Um, you know, let's. So was yeah. like Stacy Q busy? Like you couldn't cover Stacy Q? What's going on, Brian? What yeah, we, we she 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 did a cease and desist, <laughs> and then she she Lee was like, "Fuck you." <laughs> Lisa, 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 cult gem are like. No, she, no, she was on board. But, oh. Yeah, but she was a little too on board. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, it is. In, we're not really um, a covers kind of band, or I'm, or I don't really think about covers very much, you know. And right. and um, this song, we I used to have a we had a fake band in our house. <laughs> That consisted of my wife Tracy and I, and then our friend Sarah. I remember Sarah Negadari, Happy Hollows, who um, yes, of course, in Hanford, of course, our good friend Hanford. Just some friends over, and every hey. time we come over, we would just get a little tipsy and and pretend we were a band called the Suppressive Persons because I think we just saw the Scientology documentary, <laughs> and we would play songs on the you know in the house and and pretend to reenact them. And Toy Soldiers was a big hit. And we would always like pretend to be, do that, uh, or and nucleus um, uh, jam on it, which you everybody should oh. be be very thrilled that we didn't do that cover. <laughs> you know what? I love you. I love all of you in that fake suppressive person group. But yeah. yes, I'm I'm really happy you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the first thing when we when we were going to do this cover, when we were going to release it, because we we did it as a sort of a thing that would be fun, work with Butch. It kind of came up separately from different people and we thought we should really attempt this even though we thought there's no, I don't know how, you know, cause I really do like that song. And I thought, well, wh why then do it, you know? And then I, it was just almost like a challenge to see if we could try and um, r replicate a, a certain emotional tonality in it. You know, there's something in that song that just um, oozes, at least to me. And it was, we wanted to see what would happen if we attached a certain musicality to it and if we can kind of keep that. Mm -hmm. that and um, that's really what we were doing. And we didn't really know what we were gonna do with it. And then we decided to, uh, you know, to put it out, especially for times like this, not knowing what it would, you know, be what it is. So you, know, you did before, these. You did this cover back when you were recording yeah. with Butch in those. We did after we did it in January, I believe, of this okay. year, which again wow. seems so long ago. Right. And we just kind of were having fun with it, you know. And in turn, it made it very not fun because immediately it was just like, "What are we doing? <laughs> How am I going to do this?" At first, I was so locked on to the way the song moved and the way the key was, and I didn't want to change anything. And I would try and sing it like her. And eventually I think Joe, my keyboard player said, dude, you, I know you're trying, but you can't compete with a 19 year old girl. <laughs> so, I was trying, I was like, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joe is right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we changed keys and we worked a lot of stuff and we got wiped out a lot of the musical sort of things and then found that the song, uh, it's funny when you hear these songs, especially when they're, I guess designed to be really popular songs, but um, in that there's some very um, you you recognize the the um, almost intelligent things that happen in it when you break it down. Like you, there's just certain chords that just seem like wow, what this is really strange that this is in this when you sort of look at it. Because and that's it, fun for you on that end. It was that. fun, and it was almost like what are we doing? <laughs> Let's talk about your 80s movie nights. What's going on with those? I don't know. Was, uh, I don't know who set that up, but it ended up being kind of fun, which is actually good timing because um, I set up a screen in my backyard for it. We, had, we sort of had to build a little quarantine network. Uh -huh. I, have, I have a five-year-old son and like you know, we're, he has to see a certain amount of friends. So we have this little network. 
And we've been doing those on the weekends in the backyard of our house. And we just watched E.T., which terrified my child. <laughs> oh, no! Uh, yeah, hold on one second. I'll show you something. Oh, no! That's so sad. So that will terrify him like it terrified all of us, right? But I gave him this. This is a 1982 doll that I had in the garage. It smells really bad. Oh my God, that's an original E.T. like stuffed alien. I asked him if I wanted to paint the eyes back and he said no. So now he owns this doll, which when I was a little kid was my best friend. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. And what an amazing thing to, to pass on to your son. <sighs> Throw that thing in the wash. I have done everything I can to do it. And I've even looked up <laughs> online if an old doll will kill your child. <laughs> I love E.T. so much. So what do you, and you've been bringing in people because you, I see you, you know, posting on socials about joining, people can join you for this E.T. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Nikki and I did one about Purple Rain, which is a very interesting movie to look back at. <laughs> yes, it is. There's a lot of darkness in that movie. It's, it's, it is, amazing and it's massively problematic in so many levels that it's it's almost it, shocking. but you mm -hmm. know what that moment when uh it is prince is it um you know that that moment where they're doing purple they're finally doing the wendy and lisa song purple rain yeah. and wendy he, and lisa you know, are clutch they are the most important player and morris day is pretty important of course and then like but when prince like you know kisses her on the cheek and she, she has this look on her face like you know finally finally you did my song like finally and it's working and it's so amazing like i'm a mess he there's two things that are interesting it's interesting that he would have put himself which is fascinating that he puts himself as a villain in the movie in a way yeah and that's an interesting thing because most people have such egos and i can't i mean i can't imagine axl rose or anybody's doing that it's like he is a problem and he's pissing off his band. He's pissing off the club. The other thing that's funny is that throughout the movie, he's playing the best songs you've ever heard in your life. And they're like, you don't have, you, what happened up there, kid? <laughs> he like plays beautiful ones. They're like, man, you're blowing it. You better score. And we're just like, if we walked into Spaceland in 2002 and saw that, we'd all throw our instruments down. <laughs> Just been like, we saw, or the time. If the time showed up in residency at Spaceland, we would have been like, that's it. <laughs> I would kill to see Jerome holding the, the mirror in front of Morris Day right now. Like, if I could be around people, that would be a moment I'd want to be around at the moment. Like Morris that. Day, his comedy actually works. Well, I love it. Let's, you know, you brought it up. Let's talk about Spaceland slash satellites yeah. to uh, end on a bummer note. But, you know, I mean, that was a place that, you know, recently they decided to pull the plug on live shows mm -hmm. um, because of the times we're living in. I can't imagine what it's like owning a venue. Yeah, but, you know, that's a place that both you and I have made so many friends, including like, I think I saw you, you know, doing the Pykel, the Pykel EP, like oh, way oh. back. Yeah, you were there. I mean, you were there all the time. You were part of our, you know, that sitcom that would have been that time. So you know, much drama in all these corners, you know? And it, was, it was a wild scene sitting there with those um, in the smoking room. Oh, the parabolic mics overhead that everybody could hear. Yeah, really, I was like, I've never heard so many dudes say so many gross things to people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was really amazing, almost like, and I would, I'm, sometimes I try to chime in basically to what we're talking about to the people at home were riveted. They, they had these, in this uh, room, they had these satellites up there. And what happened is if you're sitting on one side, you could hear the conversation because the sound that would bounce over. So you'd hear people talking from across the room and you just hear some really insane stuff. And I would try to chime in, you know, once in a while, the guy would be like, hey, you know what my band is? And I would go, no, I don't have any idea. <laughs> <laughs> it always it always amazed me, like you know, because we're audio people. So I picked up on it the very first time they went in there. Oh, but the amount of people who never ever knew totally people could hear what you were saying, even if you're whispering. The mic is picking yeah. it up and well, sending like it across the room. The cathedrals, you know, the whispering domes. It's the same sort of thing. And you're right. Like, how do they not hear us talking when we really hear them very very well? Well, it's a strange time, and I, you know, I think you know in these times when. It's absolute madness. I go through waves and I'm sure you do have like complete, you know, up and down and trying to be positive and all yeah. is lost. 
Um, but at the end of the day, I always, always, always go back to music. Yeah, that's like good. manipulate my mood. You know, yeah. it really is at this point. That's what it is. It's a it's a medicinal manipulation, and music does that. And so, um, you know, your your band is one of my favorites. So uh, thank yeah. you for. Well, you you're, know, you're one of our broadcast this performance from the HD Radio Sound Space today. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think there's so much isolation and stuff going, bringing it full circle. Like when you were really young and you sort of feel alone, and the music keeps you company, you know, almost to a point of you're shocked. Like I remember first going to a PJ Harvey show, and I was almost shocked that there was a thousand other people that liked her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. what, what is this? It's almost weird at first because it's so personal to you in your room playing along to dry her record or something like that, and and maybe a couple of your friends, but when you get into that, that whole uh, concert, it's almost shocking. There's so many people also taking ownership of it. But I think that that's important. And I think that's important right now. Music is prob probably very healing now. It's and I think- It's very comforting to know that. Yeah, I think people have spent a lot of time, including myself, like is, it's su there's such a massive amount of music that you haven't heard, you know, in the past. I think there's a lot of spelunking going on, a lot of like, finding out about things in the past and in hearing those sort of things. And I think that, I think that brings a lot of comfort. You bring a lot of comfort, Brian. I've yeah. never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the K-Rock HD Radio Sound Space Sundays. Tell um, Nikki and Joe and Christopher, we all said hello. Hey guys, they said hi. <laughs> lazy, lazy bums. <laughs> I'm Kat Corbett. Thanks for watching and listening to Bye. Rock HD Radio Soundspace Sundays.